Good morning and welcome to worship. And I think we've just been reminded of how quickly things can change weather-wise. And so obviously our thoughts are with all the families and community affected there in the Andover area with the tornado. And we will find out how we can respond in an appropriate manner. Um, as any of us that have done anything with uh, natural disasters, you can't show up at the moment and jump in. There's a time of organization, of understanding what needs to be done, of prioritizing needs, and that will be the place that we will work together toward. So here we are. We're, we're ready for a feast today that has both fish and bread as Jesus appears to the disciples for the third time <coughs> in this Easter tide. And so I invite you to sit back, to relax, to center yourself into the presence of God as we enter into worship together. Thank you, Glennis. I invite you to stand as we are called into worship, a bodily experience of movement, of acceptance in our role of worship today, as together we share these words. Come and see, Jesus is here. Come, join in with his disciples. Meet and work and play together. Come, feel their pain at his loss and their confusion at his resurrection. Come as you are and offer this time to God. Do not be afraid, for God is here. We will sing together the summons. It's in the black paper hymnal 2130.
You may be seated. And so we come to our time of prayer of spoken and unspoken communication, of understanding and hearing as well as giving away. That release that when we finally realize that it's okay to be honest in all that is happening around us, that the burdens that we carry don't have to be carried alone. And for that, I invite you into whatever is your prayer posture. Eyes open, eyes closed, hands up, hands clasped, whatever it is for you, as we pray together. God of generous, enlivening grace, we are among the fortunate ones of the world who have received much. And as such, we know that much may be required of us. We are grateful for both of these things, giving thanks firstly for the many blessings that we enjoy through accident of birth. We have food and shelter. We have access to education and health care. We live in relative security and peace. Never must we take these things for granted or forget those who lack them. We have encountered the stories of Jesus and have, we believe, come to know you differently because of him. No longer do we imagine that we have to be perfect for you to love us or include us in your plans. Jesus chose people despite their faults, possibly even because of them. Only when we have tried on our own and failed will we come to you for the help we need. So thank you for fresh starts and second chances. Thank you for having faith in us when we no longer believe in ourselves. But discipleship is not about introspection, not even about our own salvation. It's about caring for others and serving them in your name and finding to our surprise that we are healed in the process. And so we turn our attention to the world in desperate need of your love and ours. There are hungry sheep who need to be fed, both literally and spiritually. Too many children cannot learn, even if there is a school place for them, because they have no food in their bellies. And there are too many of those whose bellies are full, but they have a desperate emptiness inside of them, a hunger that only you can fill. Living God, we are heirs and successors of St. Peter, who was told to prove his love for the shepherd by feeding his sheep. Help us to fulfill that commission in our time and place, to notice where there is a need to be met, a story to be heard, a broken heart in need of healing, or a companion for a difficult journey. May we make it our business as followers of the one who gave his life for us, to spend our lives, however long or short they may be, in glad and willing service of others. On this day, we celebrate Mary Crawshaw, who will be celebrating her 97th birthday this week. Thank you, God. We lift our prayers in silence for all who are experiencing devastation because of the weather and tornadoes. O oh Lord, hear our prayers. We pray for hope and healing for the brokenhearted. O oh Lord, hear our prayers. We pray for courage and healing, restoration, for Philip, Brian, Terry, Teddy, Betty, Clifton, Larry's family, Cree, Philip, Joel, Mariah, Bob, Will, Nancy, Todd, Angela, Doris, Vicki, Mike, Jackson, David, and the Pounds family. O oh Lord, hear our prayers. Move us, change us 
to make those willing to go and to serve in your name. Amen. So I got this really good book. Justin, sit up for me, please. Justin, sit up all the way. Come on, be a good example. Thank you. I feel like this book is something that we can all take something out of. It's a really good book. Pastor Joe um, lent me, so I'm going to read it to you guys today. And I will tell you, I've read it like six times, and I have not been able to get through it without getting choked up a little bit. So it's called *The Invisible Strings* by Patrice Kurse. Guess what? It has twins in it. <laughs> Lisa and Jeremy are twins, and they were sleeping one calm and quiet night. Do you, look, do you think it looks calm outside? It's raining. Do you think there's a storm coming? Yeah. Kind of like we had? Suddenly, it began to rain very hard, and thunder rumbled until it got so loud it woke them up. Mommy, Mommy, they cried out and ran to her. Don't worry, you two. It's just a storm making all that noise. Go back to bed. We want to stay close to you, said Jeremy. We're scared. Mom said, you know, we're always together no matter what. But how can we be together when you're out here and we're in bed, said Lisa. Mom set, held something up in her right hand in front of them and said, this is how. Do you see what's in my hand? Rubbing their sleepy eyes, the twins came closer to see what their mom was holding. I was about your age when my mom first told me about the invisible string. I don't see a string, said Jeremy. You don't need to see the invisible string. People who love one another are always connected by a very special string made of love. But if you can't see it, how do you know it's there, asked Lisa. Even though you can't see with your eyes, you can feel it with your heart and know that you are always connected to everyone you love. When you're at school and you miss me, your love travels all the way on that string until I feel a tug at my heart. And when, it and when I feel it, I tug right back. And you feel it in your heart, said Jeremy. Does Jasper the cat have an invisible string? Lisa asked. She sure does, said Mom. And my best friend, me and Lucy? Asked Lisa. Best friends, too. How far can that string reach? Anywhere and everywhere, Mom said. Would it reach me even if I were a submarine captain deep in the ocean? Asked Jeremy. Yes, Mom said. Even there. Or a mountain climber, even there. A dancer in France, even there. A jungle explorer, even there. How about an astronaut out in space? Yes, even there.
then Jeremy quietly asked. This is where I said you're going to have to come in for me. <laughs> Can my string reach all the way to Uncle Brian in heaven? Sorry. I'm mad at you. <laughs> she picked such a good book. Okay. <clears throat> Does the string go all the way to us even when you're mad? Never. I'm sorry. Does the string go away when you're mad at us? Never, said mom. Love is stronger than anger. And as long as love is in your heart, that string will always be there. Even when you get older and we can't agree about things, like a movie you want to see, or a game that you want to play in the back seat, or what time to go to bed. Oh, that's right, you should be in bed. And with that, they all laughed as mom chased the twins back to their bed. Within a few minutes, they were asleep, even though the storm was still making the same loud noises outside. As they slept, they started dreaming of all the invisible strings they have, all the strings they have with their friends, and that their friends have, and that their friends have, until everyone in the world was connected by invisible strings. And from deep inside, they could now clearly see no one is ever alone. Okay, thanks for your patience. And it is an invisible string that ties us together with so many relationships of life. And I believe that's what's happening in the scripture, in this reading that we have today, in this third appearance post-resurrection of Jesus with those that he had been with, that had loved him and had served with him. And so I'm reading from the Gospel of John, the 21st chapter, verses 1 through 19. Later, Jesus appeared again to his disciples at the Sea of Tiberias. And this is how it happened. Simon Peter, Thomas, Nathaniel from Cana and Galilee, Zebedee's sons, and two other disciples were together. And Simon Peter told them, I am going fishing. They said, we'll go with you. They set out in a boat but throughout the night they caught nothing. Early in the morning, Jesus stood on the shore, but the disciples didn't realize it was Jesus. Jesus called to them, Children, have you caught anything to eat? They answered him, No. He said, Cast your nets on the right side of the boat, and you will find some. So they did. And there were so many fish that they couldn't haul the net. Then the disciple whom Jesus loved said to Peter, It's the Lord. When Simon Peter heard it, that it was the Lord, he wrapped his coat around himself, for he was naked, and jumped into the water. The other disciples followed in the boat, dragging the net full of fish, for they weren't far from shore, only about a hundred yards. When they landed, they saw a fire there with fish on it and some bread. And Jesus said to them, bring some of the fish that you've caught. Simon Peter got up and pulled the net to shore. It was full of large fish, 153 of them. Yet the net hadn't torn, even with so many fish. Jesus said to them, come and have breakfast. None of the disciples could bring themselves to ask, who are you? They knew it was the Lord. Jesus came, took the bread, and gave it to them, and he did the same with the fish. And this was now the third time that Jesus appeared to his disciples after he was raised from the dead. When they finished eating, Jesus asked Simon Peter, 
Simon, son of John, do you love me more than these? And Simon replied, yes, Lord, you know I love you. And Jesus said to him, feed my lambs. Jesus asked a second time, Simon, son of John, do you love me? And Simon replied, yes, Lord, you know I love you. And Jesus said to him, take care of my sheep. He asked a third time, Simon, son of John, do you love me? Peter was sad that Jesus asked him a third time, do you love me? He replied, Lord, you know everything. You know I love you. And Jesus said to him, feed my sheep. I assure you that when you were younger, you tied your own belt and walked around wherever you wanted. When you grow old, you will reach out your hands and another will tie your belt and lead you where you don't want to go. He said this to show the kind of death by which Peter would glorify God. After saying this, Jesus said to Peter, follow me. Follow me. Oh, it seems so easy. Follow me. Follow me. Here's the table set. We'll enjoy the meal as part of our first Sunday of the month community response to that which Jesus shared. But it sounds like we have heard this story about a net and being on shore and cast it out on the other side and you'll catch more, and we do. We hear it in the Gospel of Luke. But this story this time, it is planted post-resurrection. The other was in an earlier part of Jesus' ministry. So we know that the Gospels share stories, and they, they put different emphasis at different times. And this one is a post-resurrection vision. So here we are. That this, There were three times that Jesus visited here, right? Mary visited with him in the garden, Mary Magdalene. There was the visit when Thomas, the scientist, the engineer, the planner, needed to know that that was really Jesus behind the locked doors. And now this time on the shore. Each time Jesus has appeared to his friends, they have not recognized him. I know that when I think of people in my life that are no longer with me, I would like to think I would know who they are by the gait of their walk, by the movement of their hands when they talked. Their voice would be the voice I would instantly know. But there must be something that causes our perception of the other to maybe not recognize immediately, or at least not to recognize Jesus in this form. So there's a couple of things that stand out in this reading. Had you ever caught on to that Peter didn't have any clothes on? That's kind of like, whoa, that was a new one. That he clothed himself to go meet Jesus. Now here's the thing that happens. When we are looking back on things, we can imprint things on there that may or may not have been what was actually happening. But one commentary said, this is alluding to Peter was ashamed of his behavior, much like Adam and Eve were ashamed and they clothed themselves then from being naked when God speaks to them once more. And so in this, in recognizing Jesus, he's ashamed that he denied Jesus three times. And what does that mean in now suddenly a face-to-face? 
I think from our humanness, we can all kind of feel what would happen inside of us. Had we had opportunity to support and encourage someone and instead we protected ourselves at all costs and backed away and it led to something tragic. There's so many ways that this plays out in life, that this is not something so unique to Jesus and the disciples, right? I mean, we understand this is part of our human condition, that at some point we take on uh, self-preservation above all else and sometimes deny those that are closest to us. Now, someone, the beloved disciple, which we say is John, that's the best we can come up with is that it, it is John that says, it is the Lord. It is the Lord. In this maybe incredulous voice, maybe, I don't know, in this horror voice, I don't know what it sounded like, but it is the Lord. Knowing. And why did he recognize first? Well, there's a thought that was because he was the one that sat closest to Jesus on that night that was what we talked about as either the last supper or the first feast of the new kingdom among us and that this really is the next feast among us and once more Jesus is the one serving the disciples before they got there he already started the fire he already had grilled some fish, but then he did take some fish out of the net and prepared more for them. Abundance. And then, three times of denial, three times of being asked, do you love me? And three commands to feed my sheep. Lines up nicely, doesn't it? feels like there could be something numerically happening that we're supposed to be paying attention to. And maybe we are. What does feed my sheep mean to you? Does feed my sheep mean something different than what was possible that you were willing to do before Friday night? When our friends and neighbors are starting over again, some of them. A whole community that it feels like we need to shake our head and say that is just unfair. 30 years ago, and here we are again. What does it mean for us to feed my lambs and show up at Cloud School with a meal this week to thank the educators. For those of you that were in Sunday school classes, you had an opportunity to sign a thank you card to the staff. For those that weren't, there's a card out in the narthex for you to, to sign. And we're going to take in a thank you meal at our partnership school, thanking the teachers for the gifts they bring into community, helping the next generation. Feed my sheep. I don't know what it means for each one as an individual, but I think that if you are willing to spend time in prayer, asking, your calling will be revealed. Because that's really what Jesus was digging down to with Simon Peter. Feed my sheep. Step up as a leader. We need you now. And you're needed now. You're needed to make a difference every place around you. There is an injustice that's occurring that needs your response to it. 
Will you show up at the Lord's Diner and help serve? We're going to get back to that on a monthly basis, going to serve there. This afternoon at 2 o'clock, there's a prayer service for peace. Our prayer station we have here now has bracelets there for you to wear that say, pray for peace. I've got mine on here. There's children's sizes, there are adult sizes there to remind you that we all do have a stake in the peace in the world. And at 2 o'clock, we will meet at Calvary United Methodist Church on Rock Road to be a part of a movement of peace. Wednesday Workers is a new group we're putting together to respond to needs here at church that we can do to keep our building, our grounds in good shape, be good, good stewards of what we have here. Open door clothing, bringing the things that after you have had your use of them, but there's plenty of use left in them to share on. The spaghetti dinner, participating in that in two weeks that the youth are going to do as a thank you for support. It's important that the youth see us as well as we see the youth and their work. Would you consider reading a psalm a day as a way to get back into reading scripture and understanding your place in the world? I would hope that we're all willing to jump into the water to get to Jesus as quickly as possible. Because maybe we have questions we want answered. Maybe, maybe we want to be assured that we have a place in the world. Anne Lamont is kind of an unorthodox writer, but she talks from a, a deep faith, and she said these words in uh, almost everything, Notes on Hope. And she said, Life is way wilder than I am comfortable with, way farther out, as we used to say, more magnificent, more deserving of awe, and I would, let me start over again, more magnificent, more deserving of awe, and I would add more benevolent, well-meaning, kindly. Waves and particles, redwoods, poetry, this world of wonders and suffering great crowds of helpers and humanitarians. Here we are alive right now together. I worry myself sick about the melting ice caps, the escalating arms race, and the polluted air as I look forward with hope to the cleansing rains, the coming spring, the warmth of summer, the student marches. John Lennon said, everything will be okay in the end. If it's not okay, it's not the end. And as this has always been true, we can hope it will be again. We have all we need to come through. Against all odds, no matter what we've lost, no matter what messes we've made over time, no matter how dark the night is, we offer and are offered kindness, soul, light, and food, which create breath and spaciousness, which create hope, sufficient unto this day. We are going to come to the table this day. Come to the table where Jesus has prepared for us. We are going to have a gluten-free cracker that will be dipped into the juice and then handed to you so there will be no gluten involved in this meal. If anyone would feel more comfortable with taking their own uh, pre-packaged uh, communion elements, raise your hands and the ushers will make those available. Uh, RB, Ryan would like pre-packaged, pre please. Is there anyone else that would like pre-packaged? Is there anyone back here? So I invite you to take in a deep cleansing breath, release it. The Lord be with you. Also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. 
It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, God Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. You formed us in your image and breathed into us the breath of life. When we turned away and our love failed, your love remained steadfast. You delivered us from captivity, made covenant to be our sovereign God, brought us to a land flowing with milk and honey, and set before us the way of life. And so with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you and blessed is your son, Jesus Christ. By the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church, delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and made with us a new covenant by water and the spirit. By your great mercy, you have, we have been born anew to a living hope through the resurrection of your son from the dead and to an inheritance which is imperishable, undefiled, and unfading. Once we were no people, and now we are your people, declaring your wonderful deeds in Christ, who called us out of darkness into his marvelous light. When the Lord Jesus ascended, he promised to be with us always in the power of your word and Holy Spirit. And on the night when he, he gave himself up for us, he took bread, gave thanks to you, he broke the bread, gave it to his disciples and said, take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And when the supper was over, he took the cup. He gave thanks to you, gave it to his disciples and said, drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. On the day you raised him from the dead, he was recognized by his disciples in the breaking of the bread. And in the power of your Holy Spirit, your church has continued in the breaking of the bread and the sharing of the cup. And so in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us and on these gifts of bread and wine. Make them be for us the body and the blood of Christ, that we may be for the world the body of Christ redeemed by his blood. By your Spirit make us one in, with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all of the world until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, and the Holy Spirit in your holy church, all honor and glory is yours, Creator God, now and forever. Amen. And now, with the confidence of the children of God, let us pray the prayer that Jesus gave to the disciples, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen.
So here's what I know. God's abundance is nothing about what the pastor puts on the plate. I apologize that I had to re replenish, but maybe there's a graceful act in that too. That there is a time that we realize that we can ask for help and a pause to reset things. I invite you to be with me in prayer. Loving God, we thank you that you have fed us in this sacrament, united us with Christ, and given us a foretaste of the heavenly banquet in your eternal kingdom. Send us out in the power of your spirit to live and work to your praise and glory. In Jesus' name, amen.
I invite you to share with me the words of dedication, which are dedicating not only our financial gifts that we make as we uh, go out of the narthex there, or online, or the gifts of service with love and compassion as we serve those around us. Let us share together in these words. God, we are glad on the whole that we do not know what the future holds for us. It was all going to be good. We might become complacent. If it was going to be too awful, we might give up in despair. We hope we would be like Peter, who was told what kind of death he was going to die if he continued to follow Jesus and did not hesitate. We had let his master down once, and he was not going to do it again. Our God, we bring these offerings as a pledge of our loyalty to Christ and his King. Thank you for believing in us when we have lost confidence in ourselves. Overcome our objections with your generous grace and keep us faithful to the end. Amen. I know there are several announcements to be made. I have the one about this afternoon. We will be doing the uh, prayer service at Calvary. Also, <coughs> excuse me. <laughs> I get to go first. I get to go first. I'm sorry. <laughs> Those are both people that were teachers, too. They were... <laughs> Shall we go line up again and try this again, ladies? It's turn to go first. Children. Mary Crawshaw's family called and asked if we would do a card shower for her Thursday her, with her birthday. So we will make sure and get that address out to you as soon as possible because she is uh, living at the Brookdale community here on 21st Street. So we'll make sure everybody has the correct address. So after we've arm wrestled to figure out who's going first, go for it. So if you tried to send me an email this week telling me you were going to help with something with a concession stand, I misspelled my name. <laughs> now, I'm going to blame that on my mother, because why would you give anybody a three-syllable name and expect them to know how to spell it for their whole life? Anyway, if you want to try it again, just add an A at the end of the Lucend. Just put an A and then Pierce 54. But I can use more muffins. I think I've got plenty of cookies and also lots of bodies to help with the service and whatnot. Thanks. You may go now. Oh, no, thank you. <laughs> a parking, parking, a parking, we will go. I'm going to keep singing that. So, darlings, um, I'll be out front again with my little paper sign up. I am going to have Katie send out, uh, I'll talk to her about soon, uh, the constant contact, the link to the um, um, Sign Up Genius website, because it really, really is easy to do. And if not, you can just tell me, and I will put you in around that. And I've got several of you have already volunteered to help fill in some spots if I don't get it there. But you know, if you can give us three or four hours, either Friday or Saturday or both, that would be great. And I've also talked to people, if, if, I get, if we're not busy, they can come help Lucy. And if Lucy's not busy, you guys can come check on us. So we can work together, Lucy. OK. <laughs> Yesterday, I volunteered with the International Rescue Committee and a partner organization called Team Rubicon to set up a house in which a refugee family will soon be moving. Next weekend, I learned that they are to set up five houses. And so uh, there's a lot going into it. It takes at least four hours to set that up. You have to put together some furniture, bedding, make the beds, outfit the kitchen, and so on. I'm planning to volunteer on Friday morning, and I would be happy for others to go. You'll have to, I'll have to let you know where that will be, because I don't know the addresses or whether we'll be at the warehouse. But it would be uh, assembling some easy IKEA-type furniture, or else uh, making beds, uh, working around, setting up the house. If you would like to volunteer for this one-time opportunity, there is a paper out on the table in the narthex. You can sign your name and phone number and check the box, or if you just see me after worship, I'll be happy to get in touch with you when I know more about it. But that's this Friday, uh, setting up houses for refugees. Thank you, sir. 
Um, this universe, this uh, congregation has always had a close tie to Wichita State University with many faculty members uh, and a lot of students and a, an active uh, college student program once upon a time. Um, we have three college students. Since we're nearing the end of the semester, I want to introduce them to you again. I know that you've seen them sing. Um, Elena is here, Elena Nelson. Matthew Smith. Matthew, stand up. Matthew, stand up. You want to get paid? Stand up. <laughs> Jameson O'Connell. Okay. And so these guys, uh, the, I think Elaine is going to be with us through the summer because she lives in Wichita. Jameson is in Fort Collins, Colorado. Matthew's in, no, Jameson's yeah. in Fort Collins. And Oklahoma City. Oklahoma City is Jameson. So they're going to be going home for the summer, but we hope we'll be back next fall. I think they've got another Sunday with us, though, probably. Everybody does, and Elena will be here through. Um, these guys are all singing this afternoon uh, in a concert at WSU, Dirksen Fine Arts Center, Miller Concert Hall. It's the oratorio concert with the orchestra and all of the vocal music um, choral groups. Um, they're doing selections from Mendelssohn's Elijah and then a work by Martin Lordson called um, Lux Eterna. So that's going on this afternoon at 3 in Miller Concert Hall if you have time to catch that. Thank you. Thank you. I invite you to stand as you are able as we sing our final hymn, You Are Mine. It is again in the faith we sing, 2218.
Thank you, Mr. Lightbearer. As we are sent out into the world, let us share these words together. Go and bake bread and light the grill. Invite some friends around to partake and share the good news that Jesus is not dead but alive. And know his blessing, experience his love, recognize his forgiveness, and live each day in the Jesus way. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, now and forevermore, go in peace.